Hey guys, so before I start this review, I just want to um, say a couple words about uh, one of the band members from this very album and uh, the albums previous to this. Unfortunately, Mr. Clive Burr, I just found out earlier this morning as I went onto Facebook that uh, he passed away. He uh, lost his battle with MS and I just wanted to make a little tribute to him and um, I dedicate this review to him. He, I've always preferred Clive Burr's drumming style to Nico McBrain and um, he's just he's always had such a powerful charisma. He's always had a very fun loving personality and um, for that I am um, taking off my hat for the rest of this review. My hat goes off to him. So um, yeah, I don't care if my hair looks like shit. I am going to be doing this without my hat in respect to Clive Burr. Um, this is very tragic news, and um, um, I'm still out of shock about it. Uh, I'm, I'm at a loss for words right now, um, but I still want to respect Clive Burr and um, just do my best to... Uh, pay the most appropriate tribute to him as possible because um, a man like him, he definitely deserves it. His efforts on the first three albums, including the one I'm about to review, are just absolutely incredible. His drumming style is just fantastic. And um, yeah, I just um, want to have a little bit of a moment of silence for Clive really quick. So, um, let's begin. Thank you. And, uh, I'm not going to continue with peace of mind and uh, the rest of the album reviews today. Uh, I'm just going to have Number of the Beast be its standalone review in respect to Clive Burr. So I'll continue peace of mind, power slave and all that tomorrow. And um, yeah, thank you very much again. And now uh, let's start. <laughs> One thing I forgot to mention about the um, review before this for Killers is the artwork itself. That um, is pretty fucking important that I mention the artwork. Um, yeah, Derek Riggs, um, he's just amazing. Uh, Killers, I forgot to mention, was one of my favorite album covers, but I think this one may be my favorite out of all of them. Uh, I just love the concept here. Uh, right here you got a little tiny Eddie right there. Then you got the devil controlling him. And then you got Eddie right there. What do you know? Um, yeah, I love that. It's pretty much like Inception, so to speak, only uh, it predates it by about 28 years. So, um, yeah, I, I just love the album cover here. Eddie is, and this is probably my favorite incantation of Eddie. That and uh, Seventh Son of the Seventh Son, but I think this one tops it, in my opinion. And uh, what's also like, what also contributes to it is that I'm pretty sure this is an original right here. As you can see right here, the lyrics are a lot more just like, you know, plain looking as compared to uh, something like this where there's a whole bunch of shit inside. Um, because I'm, I'm pretty sure this is like, oh yeah, whatever, just lyrics. But then the remaster is like, holy shit, like histories and pictures and stuff. So, and that's really cool. And the thing that also makes it original is the, um, um, the artwork is a lot lighter than the, um, the remastered edition. It's a lot more like black there. Here it's a lot more like, um, there's a lot more blues and uh, the textures just seem to be a lot finer, so to speak. And also, Total Eclipse isn't on the original track listing there. Um, it's just the original, like, eight-song track listing. So, um, 
yeah, I think this is really fucking awesome. And now that I've actually talked about the album cover, let's talk about the content. So this album is Bruce Dickinson's first album with the band upon leaving his former band Samson and um, replacing Paul Diano, who would eventually go on to make a complete fucking fool of himself, but that's another story entirely. And by this point, Iron Maiden was already gathering a ton of energy and a ton of fans with their previous two albums with Paul Diano, but when they acquired Bruce Dickinson to the helm, they really went over the top with their sound, and um, it was just a major breakthrough for the band. Uh, songs such as Hallowed Be Thy Name, Run to the Hills, the title track Number of the Beast, they really just garnered a lot of acclaim, a lot of fans, and um, just a lot of attention in general. In fact, the title track Number of the Beast is the first Iron Maiden song that I've ever heard in my life, period. I first heard it back like a long time ago, like almost a decade ago if not more, on the uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4 game. It was in, in the soundtrack, and uh, I used to hear Number of the Beast, the song itself, play, like, all the time in that uh, game, of course. And I think they also included, like, an avatar of Eddie in that game, although I don't really remember because I wasn't really, like, I was a little kid and I didn't pay attention to Eddie and Iron Maiden at the time, but... That was just something to notice. And by the time I was more aware of like heavier music in general, by the time I was gathering a lot more interest in metal music, uh, Number of the Beast, the song would still be my first Iron Maiden song. I first heard it on the, the Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock video game on the PS2 and uh, yeah, it was one of my favorite songs to play in that game. This is probably um, my favorite production style of uh, Martin Birch. Um, I think they took what made Killer so awesome and punchy, and they just uh, made it sound more electric and aggressive on this album. Um, it's still, yeah, it's got that very thick, punchy sound that I loved from Killers, although at the same time, it sounds more over the top. It sounds more like electric and in your face. Um, I love the uh, guitar effects on this album, and, well, the musicianship itself is amazing, and um, the guitars, like, when you hear songs like um, The Prisoner and Number of the Beast, um, you hear sort of like a modulating flanger effect going on, like, especially during the intro of uh, the song Number of the Beast when they first introduce it, um, it just sounds like very like disorienting and psychedelic sort of sounding. I mean, not like psychedelic, like Pink Floyd or anything. It just has that sort of disorienting, like sort of ambiance to it. Um, it's very subtle, but it still really adds a certain character to the album sound. Performance and the musicianship on this album is phenomenal. Uh, the twin lead guitar attack really comes into fruition on this album. You've heard hints of it on the uh, previous album, Killers, but I think this is where it really begins to bud, and it just, um, it just sounds really, really cool. You hear it on songs like Gangland and uh, The Prisoner and stuff like that, and uh, you can really see Adrian and Dave really playing off each other, and it just is really fun to hear. Uh, Steve Harris's bass is very thick, um, it's just playing alongside the guitars, almost acting like a third guitar, not just, oh, it's in the background, no. It's like, oh yeah, this is a key central role in the music. Uh, Clive Burr's drumming is very tight, very focused, and, but also providing that raw, aggressive energy that I've always loved from the early Iron Maiden albums. And of course, th I think this is Bruce Dickinson's best performance by far. He sounds flawless on this release. And I'm not knocking his later performances, like on Seventh Son of a Seventh Son or Power Slave or anything like that. I think he sounds absolutely amazing on those albums too. But uh, on here, I think he has a really visceral edge to him in this performance. And uh, I think he's at his most emotionally engaging, at, at least for me. And um, I think he's reached some of his highest notes on this album, like, ever. Um, I think he reached, like, a B5 or something 
like towards uh, a solo in Gangland, which a lot of people don't like for some reason, but I love it. I think I, I think it's better than Runs of the Hills, to be honest. But um, I think um, here he's like at his most like visceral, in your face, aggressive, most emotionally engaging, and probably most technically impressive. So um, not knocking the later performances, they're all awesome. But here I think this may be his best performance. Overall, I have to say, this is probably my favorite Iron Maiden release. For the longest time, it was Seventh Son of a Seventh Son, or it was a matter of life and death, it was Brave New World. I was switching all over the place, but for the longest time, it was mostly Seventh Son of the Seventh Son. But returning back to this release um, just made me realize that this is probably like the best of both worlds. Like It combines the epic theatrical songwriting of the Bruce Dickinson era, and um, the uh, raw, aggressive, punchy, in-your-face era of the Paul Diano's first two albums. It mixes it all together in like a cauldron of just fantastic awesomeness. And um, yeah, again, it really combines the best of both worlds. I think this is their most complete album for me and uh, just some of their most impressive songs to date. Uh, there's not a single filler song for me. I know many people hate Gangland. I love Gangland. I think that's a fantastic song. Um, overall, I have to give this about a 9.5 out of 10. I, I just adore this release. This is one of my top 10 favorite albums of all time. And I think that's all I really have to say about this album. Thank you very much for watching. Sorry I had to be so long. There was just a lot to talk about. And I'll see you next time for peace of mind.